Does the near-perfect MacBook Air make room for the iPad? With the latest M2 equipped, redesigned MacBook Air, it looks like Apple has delivered a fully serviceable and highly functional laptop. The Mac lineup, which once seemed to be slipping into irrelevance, feels stronger than ever. This seems like a good time to buy one, except for one big question mark, what about the iPad? My colleague Daniel Van Boom asked these questions when the new 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros were released last fall. But now, with a revamped, mainstream laptop and iPad OS becoming more and more Mac-like, the lines between these products seem to be a bit more blurred. And yet not enough. He was talking to a colleague who was torn between buying a MacBook Air or an iPad with a keyboard, and the answer is no clearer than it was a year ago. The MacBook is still very functional and has improved in areas like battery life and processing speed, but it's still shaped like an old-fashioned, non-touchscreen laptop. The iPad, meanwhile, has more and more laptop-like features, notably the Air and Pro models. Keyboard and trackpad slash mouse support, a revamped multitasking system in iPad OS 16, and lastly, support for an external monitor that now works as an extension of your iPad workspace. It also has unique features that Apple Macs lack, the pen for art and handwriting, face ID for pro models, better cameras with LiDAR that can be used for select R and 3D scanning purposes, and a ton of apps and unique games that are not all available or optimized for Mac. iPads get too expensive at the higher end, becoming laptop price devices despite not being completely useful for all needs. At the low end, entry-level iPads lack some of the chips of the future and USB-C that could make a bigger difference a couple of years from now. I'm actually leaning toward buying a MacBook Air M2 as a belated personal laptop upgrade, mainly because I know iPads still can't do everything I need for work and personal data management. Not easily, at least. What I would still love, and I'm still hoping for, is some kind of iPad that can run Mac OS, or something effectively equivalent. Apple continues to make progress on this front, with a small change every year or so. In 2022, iPads will be more multitasking, if you buy an iPad with an M1 chip. In my time with the public beta so far, it's still not enough to live without a PC or Mac. Apple is expected to have a new iPad Pro in the fall, one that will possibly have the M2 chip that's also in the newer MacBook Pro and Air. Don't expect it to have a huge impact on the way you use an iPad, though, Apple still limits the flexibility of iPados. Although iPados 16 makes progress in the number of app windows that can be open at once, there is a limit. So far, on existing M1 iPads, performance seems good enough, save for a few glitches, though it's hard to tell if that's just early beta software. If you're trying to figure out what's the most secure iPad to get right now, I'd say the Air, the M1 chip should keep it ready for future OS updates, and it has a lot of performance improvements over the entry-level iPad which probably will also receive an update in the fall. But then again, with new iPads expected in a few months and the recent Prime Day sales not offering huge discounts, perhaps it's best to wait and see. But it's all pretty annoying to me, because Apple made it extremely easy on the Mac front to get a pretty good computer. As good as iPads are, they are still more on the fringes. Macs and iPads are closer than ever, but deciding which to buy is still a tough one mainly because Apple's solution still seems to be by both, and that's not really a solution for the rest of us.